All right, let's continue with something more interesting. I don't really want to bore you to death, so uh, we will jump to the repeater here and uh, do a little bit of uh, hacking so that you do something exciting. So what you can do with the repeater is to take one request and uh, repeat it. So very clever name, you can repeat requests. And the point is that if you if you find a request which, which seems interesting, then you can set it to a repeater and start playing with it one by one. You can just change one parameter and see what's the response. So if you look at the uh, user interface, I have already a request here. And what happens, you have the request here, you click on go, and then you get the response here. So you can always immediately see what the response was. And, and you can just go back and forth between requests. So you play with the parameter and uh, you change it and then you get an error message. You can just uh, go back to the to the status when, when you, you still got some valuable response. So repeater is very simple. You just take request and play with it as long as you find a stable attack. What we are going to do now is uh, we'll try to uh, try to exploit a cross-site scripting attack in the web code, and uh, we'll do that with the repeater. I don't really want to go into details now what the cross-site scripting attack is. Uh, you can you can either look it up here in web code, it's actually described here, or you can Google it a little bit. Uh, I will just quickly summarize it now. And if you don't understand, then, then read a little bit about it. So a cross-site scripting attack is when you when you can manipulate an input in a request, so an input parameter, and then you get a response, and the input string, what you gave, will be built in the response, uh, the HTML code of the response. And uh, if, the, if the server doesn't validate the input parameter correctly, or it doesn't uh, escape the the response or the, the input string in the response, then what you can do is you can put HTML code in this input parameter. And as it will be injected in the response HTML, when it returns to the browser, the browser will think that that's also part of the HTML code and it's going to render it. And what you can also do, you can put JavaScript code inside the HTML, what you put in, and then the browser will execute this JavaScript code. And why, why is that good? So cross-site scripting is like the buffer overflow of, uh, of web applications. Uh, it's at least as widespread as buffer overflow, and it's also as dangerous. So because what you get, you get the ability to execute any kind of JavaScript code in the user's browser. But you, you, can, you can do whatever you want with that. You can try to try to steal the session cookies or use his credentials to get full access to the application. Or you can try to uh, steal data from the, from the application by request, requesting data from the server and then sending it to your, your own server. Or you can, you can actually load other pages in the background where you can embed some uh, exploits against the browser itself. And with that, you can exploit the browser and get full access to the user's computer. So you can do like really, really a lot of things with uh, with cross-site scripting. We are not going to do that. We'll just experiment with that a little bit. But uh, I encourage you to, you know, like try to imagine scenarios what you could do with a cross-site script, what you could do if you can execute JavaScript in the client's application. So what we're going to do is come to the, in web go to the cross-site scripting and then to the reflected cross-site scripting attack. Reflected means that the input, what you, the attack, what you put in will be executed immediately in the response. Uh, so in the next page, what you get after submitting the, the data. Okay, so you get this nice input field here. We have quite a few um, fields what we can exploit. I'm going to take this 
nice little test string which has like all the weird characters what might be useful in an attack and I will just uh, paste it here in all input field to see whether any of them is uh, is exploitable and then I'm gonna click on purchase now you get this nice error message here and something is weird you don't see the the this this part of the string, the XSS, XSS test error. That's a really good indicator that something is wrong. So we can just open the console. It was uh, Control Shift C to open the debugger tool. And um, then we come here and check it in the HTML code. Oh yeah, all right. You can see it actually here immediately that this is the this is the error message from the server. And you could see that although you put all of this XSS tag here, the browser thought it's an it's the valid HTML tag, so it added the closing tag to it. So the browser thought that that was a valid HTML and tried to render it. That's why you don't see the string itself, because the browser rendered it as HTML. That's that's what we want. This is this is the most simple example of cross-site scripting. All right, we know that we have something here. And um, if you just look at the error message a little bit, it says you entered t -t -t instead of your three dig digit code. So we had to put in our three digit code here. So our assumption is that this is the vulnerable form. So I will just put like, normal data in for everything else and click on purchase again. I just did it for to have this request in burp. Now we can come to the proxy and find this request in the proxy and it's here. You see here are all the other uh, data and uh, this is the one which we think is uh, exploitable. Now we click right click and say send to repeater. Then the request appears in the repeater. We can try it again, say go. And then here you can say search for XSS test. So the string what you put in. And now we found a place in the HTML response uh, which is probably vulnerable. Now what we want to do here in repeater is to play a little bit with uh, with this parameter. So if I just put here test and I say go and I look for test. Uh, there are many tests here. Oh yeah, it, it was there. Yeah, that seems normal. Now let's something let's try something more useful. I will say script. Actually, you can do it here in the params tab, so that you try that as well. This is the field one which we want to test, and we write here script alert forty two script. So if this uh, HTML code is rendered, then this alert32 will open this uh, default JavaScript alert window with the number 32 in it. That's the most basic proof of concept of, uh, of a cross-site scripting. And now we can say go again. Yes, and search for alert32. You can immediately see from uh, from the highlighting that even burp thinks that this is uh, this is an HTML tag instead of just normal string. So what we want to try, we want to see this now in the browser, whether we really get this, uh, this alert window. So we can just come back here to the row request and do right click again. That's also a really cool tool. You can come here to request in browser. Uh, you do that when you want to try one request in the browser and you want to 
uh, see the response in the browser. And uh, you have two options in original session or in current browser session. The original session means that the request will be sent with this session cookie, what's already in the request here in Burp. And the current browser session mean that Burp will let the browsers uh, attach the cookie to the request. So the cookie will, will be different. It's good because sometimes you are playing with a, a request here, which is old. Uh, it's not for the, the, the session what you are playing with right now in your browser. And um, then you couldn't you couldn't try it with with the old cookie. So then you can just say use the current browser session and then it will work in your current session. So let's do that. To, to send the request in browser, you need to copy this, load this URL in the browser. What happens in the background is that Burp will know when you're loading this URL, Burp will know which request you want to send and it will send the request and uh, load the response to the browser. So I open a new tab and uh, I'm loading the request or the, the URL. And ta-da, that's the, that's the cross-site scripting. That was the JavaScript code, what you're injected. So if, you, if we're clicking on OK, then and we can inspect the HTML page again. You come here, it says, whoops. And here is your, here is your script tag, what you're injected. So what, what this essentially means it that is that if you get the user to submit this uh, request, then you can execute whatever JavaScript you want, and you can do whatever in the in his browser session uh, what you want and what's possible with JavaScript. So you have like endless possibilities, more or less. Now this time this was pretty pretty simple because because we knew immediately what to do. But sometimes uh, when you really want to use the repeater is when the, uh, the, the server implements some kind of filtering to protect against cross-site scripting. And then, then you can come to the repeater and put in one attack string like this one and, uh, and then just submit it and look at the response. And it turns out that something was filtered then you can try something else. You can try like uh, um, trying to inject an image tag. And um, let's say load some non-existing image and uh, do um, and in the on error you can do your JavaScript. And you can try that one and, and then you can come here and search for alert. And then you will see that, that okay, script tag was filtered, filtered, but the image tag was not filtered. And we can also look at in the browser. Yeah, it was executed again. So, so in the, uh, in the repeater, you can just play around with the request and, and try to find the, the, the input which really works for you. Uh, that's the point. So uh, I recommend you to play a little bit with these cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, you can try the other ones here uh, if you're interested. And if you feel comfortable with cross-site scripting and with the repeater itself, then continue to the next section and uh, we'll check out something else.